What's going on YouTube? This is SG1 Sports and I'm going to preview the big one coming up on Saturday, Alabama versus Tennessee. Give you my prediction on what is going to happen in this game. Again, just a massive, massive game nationally and in the SEC as well. Let's get right to it. This game will be at 3.30 Eastern Time on CBS. Both teams, of course, coming in undefeated. Alabama ranked number three in the country, Tennessee number six. You see, Alabama is favored by 7.5 points. The over-under in this one is 65.5, so expecting a pretty high-scoring game. Uh, the, the big question, of course, is Bryce Young. Will he play in this game? Uh, is he going to be 100% healthy? That's, that's the story, and I'm going to do this preview as if Bryce Young was playing. I'll give you my thoughts on if he does not play as well, but uh, we're going to be looking at things as if Bryce Young is playing in this game. Both teams uh, will be... 100% healthy, except for you know the guys that we know are going to be out, and we'll take a look at those injuries in just a second. Uh, but let's look at what's the, you know the last five games for each team. You see Alabama, you see their last five games um, squeaking by against Texas A&M last week, but without Bryce Young, I've said many times that if Bryce Young had played in that game, I just don't think it would have been close. Arkansas was a blowout until Bryce Young went out. Arkansas had a lot of fight there in the third quarter, came back. But at the end of the day, it was the rushing attack for Alabama that pulled away in that one. Easy wins over Vanderbilt, ULM, and then, of course, that scare against Texas. But that was several weeks ago, and I feel like they've improved a lot of things since then. For Tennessee, uh, it's almost as if they've been getting better and better. You go back to the Pitt game. They didn't play great in that game, but they were able to win it. That was a big win on the road. And then against Florida, they controlled that game for the most part, wound up being kind of close at the end. And then against LSU, you saw Tennessee played their best game of the season, beating them 40-13. to So this is a Tennessee team coming in with a lot of confidence. And this is going to be just a, a great atmosphere. Game day is there. This will be probably, I'll go ahead and say it right now, this will probably be the, if the game is good and it's close, this will probably be the best atmosphere we see all year long in college football. I think they're going to be that fired up for this game. It's going to be massive, and I can't wait to see what happens. You take a look at the stats for these two teams. Both teams scoring a lot of points. Tennessee with a slight advantage there. Points allowed per game. Alabama's defense has the advantage there, no surprise. Total yards, Tennessee, a, a decent advantage there over Alabama, 547 to 504. You look at the passing game. Look at the balance for Alabama. We talk about them. Everyone's talking about Alabama. They can't run the football. They actually run the ball more than, than they throw it in terms of yardage. And the, the second half of Arkansas and then last week against Texas A&M, maybe that skewed that a little bit. I'd love to see those numbers before Bryce Young went out. I'm going to say the passing numbers are probably higher than the rushing numbers at that time. So, you know, things like that can can make can make these numbers misleading a little bit. You look at Tennessee, they're really throwing it, though. 340 yards per game, 207 on the ground, though. This is an explosive offense. Looking at the defense, big advantage for Alabama. Looking at the, the pass yards allowed, big advantage for Alabama. But the run defenses are pretty similar. Uh, and Tennessee did go against a really good rushing attack in Florida. So that will be interesting. Can Alabama run the football against this Tennessee defense, which has been pretty good against the run? Let's take a look at some of the leaders so far, or the leaders for these two teams. You see Bryce Young, Hendon Hooker, both have had great years so far. No interceptions for Hendon Hooker. I think that's the biggest takeaway. Bryce Young has had a, a couple of bad, bad passes this year, some bad interceptions. You see on the ground, it's been Jameer Gibbs. What would Alabama, where would they be without him? He has really stepped up for them, not just on the ground, but in the air as well. Uh, Holden has stepped up to, to be the number one receiver for Alabama, but I still think they're looking for someone to be that go-to guy. They've kind of spread it around. Uh, and then Jalen Hyatt for Tennessee, he sent 388 yards this season, five touchdowns. He's going to be a big weapon in this game for Tennessee. Big question will be Cedric Tillman. Will he be back in this game? If he's back, he's their number one receiver. I think most people would agree with that. Uh, they've got Jalen Wright and Jabari Small on the ground. Two guys that can get it done. They're averaging 4.7 yards per carry. Those two backs, which is a very good, you know, that's a solid number. When you look at Alabama's running backs, Jameer Gibbs, 8.3. Jace McClellan, 6.4. Alabama has been getting it done in, in much bigger chunks. Tennessee's run game, you know, they, they give them 
three or four or five yards here and there, but they don't get as many chunk plays as Alabama and, and big plays in the in the ground game on the ground. So that's something to watch. Possibly Alabama breaking a big run or two in this game. And, and Tennessee, I think they just need to continue to run the ball. So they're not going to they're not going to run it down Alabama's throat. They're going to, to it's going to mostly be throwing the football in this game. Hidden Hooker, I think, will have to use his legs, but it's going to be a you need enough of a run game. You need to be able to get three or four yards, maybe a six or seven yard run here or there. That's going to be big for Tennessee. Alabama, I think, will will try to run the ball a little bit more, especially if Bryce Young does not play. Of course, that's a totally different ball game if he does not play. But here, again, are the leaders for these teams. Looking at the injuries for Alabama, it's all about Bryce Young. He's questionable. Uh, looks like they probably still won't have Tyler Harrell back. Or for the first time, really, you know, interested to see what he is going to do with his speed once he gets back. JoJo Earl is back for Alabama, but that, again, that's the only big, big injury. It's Bryce Young, and we'll see if he can go. I I feel like the wording from Nick Saban, you know, saying that he's hopeful that he will play, that kind of makes me think that he's expecting him to play. You know, last week his wording was a little bit different. It was you know, wait and see. You know, we don't know. Uh, this time it was hopeful, so I don't know. It, it's definitely something that we're not going to get an answer to probably until Saturday unless we find out that he, if he's not going to play, they're not going to tell us. They're going to keep it a secret. If he is going to play, then maybe we will find out a little sooner. We'll see. For Tennessee, you got a lot of guys on this list here. Jalen McCullough, of course, getting arrested. I'm assuming not going to play in this game. Uh, that's a big loss for them, an experienced player in the secondary and then Cedric Tillman uh, he's going to be a big big weapon for them on the offensive side of the ball if he can go uh, it's going to be very tough to stop this Tennessee passing attack and I'm going to again do my preview as if he's going to play because I think there's a good chance that he will play in this game the FBI well they're giving Alabama the advantage here 69.8 percent chance that the Crimson Tide will win this game only a 30.2 percent chance that Tennessee will win it First of all, I'll just get it out of the way. If Bryce Young does not play, if Jalen Milrow is the guy for Alabama in this game, I think Tennessee wins, and I think they win fairly easily. I think they win by two scores. I just, I think they're, they'll be too one-dimensional on offense. Tennessee's not bad at stopping the run like I showed you earlier, and, and I don't think you're going to be able to, to win this game because I think Tennessee is going to score in this game. They're going to get points. Alabama's not going to shut them down. And so if you cannot match that, if you can't throw the football, uh, I just I don't see Alabama winning this game with Milrow at quarterback. I just don't. So I think Tennessee wins the game fairly easily. I think they'll control it, and I think they win it by two scores. I think that's what's going to happen if Bryce Young does not play. But now let's flip it around if Bryce Young does play. And again, I, I'm kind of expecting him to play. I don't. That's just kind of my gut. Uh, you know, he's had a, this will be two weeks from the injury to, to recover. I had actually had a similar injury myself, and I can tell you that uh, it, it takes a while to get over, but I didn't have a training staff that was doing all the things that I'm sure they're doing behind the scenes. And so I, I kind of think that he'll be good to go in this game. Okay, so what's going to happen here? How is it going to play out? You go back to last year's game, Tennessee, they were able to score on Alabama early, made it interesting. I think the depth kind of wore them down. Alabama was able to pull away late. I think Tennessee is able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe the full game this time, though. I think that it is, it's is—it's going to be a great game. I think it's going to be a very close game. And I really feel like it's going to be a game that comes down to the final possession. That's how I see it playing out. Uh, I, I think that in this one, you may see Tennessee struggle a little bit in the red zone. That's where I think this that Alabama has an advantage. I think their defense, it's so tough to score in the red zone on them. Tennessee going to have to hit some big plays. I believe that they will hit some big plays. Uh, but can they score in the red zone? Can they get touchdowns? I think they might settle for a few field goals in this game, and that could come back to hurt them. I do, though, again, think that it will come down to the final possession. If Bryce Young has that ball, has the ball for Alabama in the, in the final minutes, I don't see him being stopped. We've seen it time and time again. When the game is on the line, he delivers. And because of that, if Alabama has the ball last, I think they win this game. If Tennessee has the ball last, I'll tell you what, I don't I don't know if Alabama can stop them. It may really come down to who has the ball last in this game. 
But if I was going to go with the defense to get a stop, because obviously it's just it's just chance as far as who has the ball last. But if I had to go with the defense to get a stop at the end of the game, it's a team that just did it when they had to last week against Texas A&M. It's Alabama. I trust their defense more, and I'm going to pick them to win this game. 35 to 30 is my prediction. I think Tennessee will settle for some field goals in this game. Like I mentioned, Alabama's red zone defense will step up. I think Tennessee will actually have more yards than Alabama in this game. But on the scoreboard, it will be Alabama winning this game. 35 to 30. If Bryce Young is in there, that's my prediction. Would love to get your prediction. Give me your thoughts on this one down in the comments below.